we always wheel and deal on eBay, and these simple, easy tricks always get us more sales. They increase our average sale price per customer as well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about wheeling and dealing to get yourself more sales on eBay. Now, I'm old school. I used to actually be a vendor at some flea markets. I had antique booths and the whole works back in the day. One thing you'll know if you're at a flea market, you're always going to be wheeling and dealing. You'll have some customer that may want a couple things, may want some combined, better price. All that sort of thing is something that you can do to get yourself some more sales. Now we're going to look at a sale in some conversations between me and one of my buyers here in just a few moments. But some easy things that you can do that will always help you out is things like offering combined shipping. I know a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to mess with it. If you're not offering combined shipping, I can almost certainly guarantee you that you are losing some sales. No question about it. If you're not doing best offer, chances are you could be losing some sales as well. I know there's some diehard folks that love auctions, but every time I seem to run an auction, no matter what the item is, I do far better by doing a best offer. Almost always every single time now if you do an auction on something that that's not super super common you need to have the right people online for them to bid against each other to raise the price from your initial list price and sometimes if you run it you know for seven ten days there's not enough for the right people online at that point so sometimes your item will only sell for your initial list price if you do it that way you have to list your items as an auction for the bare bones minimum you would be willing to take for that item on the other hand if you do a bin and just one of those people is online the same one that bid on your opening offer your opening price for your auction they may spend twice that to buy it or make an offer on a bin item, a buy it now option. So you've always got to take that into account. We run things all the time. I just tested a whole bunch of auctions and didn't do very well in the auction aspect. The second I switched them over at the end of the auction to bins, I got offers higher than my initial list price straight on out. So that's the thing that I look at. Also, if you're looking at, say, Terapeak and Solds, you will find that the majority of the time in collectibles and vintage, at least, you will do far better. Sometimes 40, 50 percent more increase in profits from those items by listing them as a bin. I buy it now with a best offer option. Now, five or ten years ago, it would have been the other way around. The auctions would go for more. These days, everybody wants the item now. They don't want to wait. They don't want to fight. They just want to put an offer in and get it and be done with it that's the majority of a large number of the folks that are buying out there even i do that as well i would rather just do a bin set in price on there and be done with it if i pay a little more i pay a little more but you're sure to get it in those cases no one's going to snipe you in the last two seconds with no way for you to increase a bit if they throw some monstrous price out there those are key factors and things that I always recommend if you're selling vintage. Now, if you're doing clothing and things like that, new old stock, um, video games and things, it may be a lot harder to do that. But in niches, vintage, collectibles, or any of those categories, it, it's so much better in my opinion, as well as the evidence on eBay shows that to be the case as well. We sell some of these items on Amazon. I sell them on other sites as well. They sell for a lot more as bin buy it now prices than anything else religiously across the board. Now, another thing I would recommend to everybody, if somebody makes an offer or buys something from your store and you have similar and like items or items in the very same category, I would always, 100%, always send them a message letting them know that you have more items similar to that or in the same category or like to like items items and that you would be happy to combine for them to give them a better shipping rate that is a big plus if you go out of your way to do that the customer is going to know that you're interested in their business for those folks who don't do combined shipping or no returns that's another one no returns is a big one in the collectibles field if you never offer returns that's another way you're going to lose some customers if there's something wrong with the item say it's an expensive item 
and they can't return it, they're going to have a problem with that. Keep in mind, too, just because you say that they're not going to be able to return it, that you don't offer returns, if somebody opens it up as a not as described, they will be able to return it no matter what. So all they got to do is switch the reason and, and you still have to take it back. But not offering returns doesn't offer you the benefits and the safety that having a 30-day free returns would offer you. It'll let the customer know that you're willing to fix or solve any issues that they may have. Now, obviously, in some categories, you may not want to do that. Clothing, for example. For those that sell clothing and get returns after 20 days, four weeks or something, that may be a different case if you're getting a ton of those. But in collectibles, vintage, comics, cards, all that kind of stuff, it's the best way to go, in my opinion. Using that as your return policy, you are covered by so many other aspects that you wouldn't be covered from if you didn't have those options. So if somebody opens up a return, I don't even have to give them all their money back. I don't have to give them the original shipping back. I don't have to worry about feedback in any of these cases. Even if they open up a case and never return the item, I'm covered as well. And to get the full coverage from eBay for every type of issue that eBay offers coverage for, the only way to do that, as per the user agreement, as per eBay conversations we've had, is to do a 30-day free return. I almost never have a return, so it's not a big, big ordeal at all. Now back to emails. As I said, I always recommend contacting them, offering them to combine. Even if it states it in your listing, I would still recommend doing it. It builds a rapport with your customers. It lets them know that you're interested in them. That's the biggest thing. It's a big push. I know there's folks that are diehard, no returns, no combined shipping, but I promise you those lose you sales. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. If you don't offer those types of returns and things like that, they lose you sales. So let's hop over right now and look at some conversations I had with a buyer as well as the results of those conversations. So here's an email I received from someone who has bought from me quite a few times in the past. Now this is somebody who I contacted who I made some offers to ahead of time. Right off the bat, first thing I did was offer him some items that are similar and like to like. And this person actually sent me this email you see here. They're currently watching 25 of my Arm & Hammer Bird cards some of which you have given me an offer on. Again, those are the offers that I already sent out to him. If I were to be, I'm sure he means buy all 25 listings, what would be the best price you could give me for them? I've attached screenshots of the items I'm currently watching in case you can't tell. Thanks very much for your consideration. Now, sometimes somebody will send me a typed up list of just item numbers. Hey, what would you do on these? What would you do on those? Most people have bought from me before always know that I always combine shipping. Even if they pay individually, I go back in without being asked and I refund the difference every single time. And you can see right here my prices. Now, these are prices I would not give to anybody just buying one, two, or three items. I gave them a bare bones price on these. So 20 of the lots, I offered them at $6.99 a piece. I broke it down with the cost total. Now, one of them was a lot of five cards. I offered them that lot for $26.50. And then there were four lots of three cards each. Again, three individual cards I threw into a lot. And I gave them those again at another break on the discount. 240 bucks is the total that I offered them. I told them I would throw in shipping because of how many they were buying. Now, when you do something like this, it helps to know how much money you have into the items that they're interested in. In this case, I literally have nothing at this point. We've sold so many from this purchase that we've made a massive profit already. Even if I hadn't sold any and this was the first round, these were just listed, and somebody's coming up with this offer, I probably still would have given them a decent offer in this range either way. Because And the initial purchase of these items, I have like a nickel into them. I bought them in mass bulk. So to me, I have nothing into them. Even if they were new and original, I'd only have a couple bucks into them. So at the end of the day, it's 240 bucks that I'm figuring I'm going to get out of this person. Again, I told them what was up. I told them if they were in agreement with them. I then followed up and told them to go ahead and place the offers on the items if they were fine with everything going on, which they did. Now, I know in some cases, folks say, go ahead and put them all together in one lot and all these other aspects to it. I would rather have individual breakdowns so I can track them in my revenue, so I can track them in the sales records that I keep. It's far easier to have them individually as they were listed to track them down and keep track of that than throwing them in a big lot. Now, here's the sale you can see. It was already shipped the whole works. 
25 items he actually bought all together and I combined those. But that's not actually the end of the story. I did email him back another time and offered him any of the other cards at the same basic breakdown. So if it's a lot of three, I offered him 1850 on him. Single cards, if he saw some other ones that he was interested in, I offered him 690 on any of the other single cards that he was interested in. So what happens? He bought some more. So even though he was technically done with those 25, I got over $300 out of this person still, even after he was finished, because I did another follow-up to him. This is something I do all of the time. If, say, someone buys one or two items, and then I go ahead and offer them, say, hey, I'll be happy to combine those. There's other ones in the store. Many times they will buy and combine a couple more. At the end of that, again, once I combine, I say, hey, if you do happen to find a few more, I'll be happy to add any other ones that you have in there. And sometimes, a certain percentage of times, they will keep buying even more than that because of the actual combined shipping. I always remind them in every one that, again, I will combine these. There'll only be one shipping charge, so it'll come out ahead for you. You've got to be diligent. You've got to be able to wheel and deal with people. It depends on what you pay on the items, of course. If you've paid too much for them or there isn't any room to make any of these sorts of deals, you won't be able to do it, of course. But I always leave enough playroom in all of our items to be able to wheel and deal. It goes back to being the flea market guy or the antique mall guy. You've got to be able to deal and converse with your customers. You've got to be able to do that. You're, you're online. No one knows you from beans. No one knows who you are. You're just some vendor on there. But if you reach out to them and are in good contact with them, offer them a bunch of stuff, offer them a break if they buy more, offer to combine, let them know that you're happy for returns or anything else like that. Let them know that you'll fix any issue that, that may happen to arise. They're going to trust and rely on you. They will trust you, rely on you far better than someone who hasn't reached out and offered them these sorts of bonuses, these sorts of deals. It almost always works across the board. This makes us thousands of extra dollars a year easily. Thousands and thousands of extra dollars. If I wouldn't combine, I wouldn't give this person a better deal, chances are I would have only sold a few cards. Some of these cards have been up for a long while as well. Some of them were recently listed, like P22 you see in this one. That's a new listing. Uh, you've got uh, F47. That's an old listing. So again, I don't mind wheeling and dealing on things like this. We've sold hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of these Arm & Hammer bird cards in the last few years. So you've got to be able to wheel and deal. And it's not just these types of items. I'll do that with anything that I am able to combine. These simple tricks will get you more money without a doubt. I can pretty much guarantee you these tricks, these steps will get you more money, will make you more sales and increase your average sale price per person. It's a good ploy. You just have to be diligent. You just have to be willing to work with folks just a little bit and talk to them. Let them know who you are. Let them know that you will help them and let them know that you're an honest, sincere seller that is out to help your buyers. That's all it will take. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.